You hear the word inflammation thrown around a lot. Well, what is it exactly? And how does it actually happen? Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Chanu Dasri. I help my clients solve their immune inflammation and digestive dysfunction using the mind-gut immunity method. This clinical approach has helped thousands of my patients resolve their symptoms, some in as little as six weeks, without the need for complex or costly interventions. In this video, I'll show you the three major pathways of inflammation that make lupus symptoms worse. I'll show you how the inflammation works on a biochemical level and how to avoid these damaging pathways to reverse inflammation fast. This topic gets a little bit into the weeds, but I promise if you stick around till the end, I'll review some practical points that you can use to help avoid inflammation and resolve symptoms. This material you're about to watch is taken straight out of my Mind Gut Immunity Academy, where people just like you learn how to beat their lupus symptoms for good, even when the diagnosis is unclear. In the course, we review several additional pathways that can be useful for addressing inflammation. In some of my other videos, I mentioned that there are five main triggers for lupus inflammation. And these five triggers include diet, digestion, sleep, stress, and exercise. And if you want to check out that video for some background, take a look at the link up here. Now, before we go any further, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell to keep up to date. I make must-see videos for anyone with lupus looking to reverse their symptoms for good. And it's really helpful information that you probably won't get anywhere else. Now, on the topic of inflammation, the mistake I see most people make is that they think inflammation is just one process, but in actuality, there's hundreds of biochemical pathways involved. And if your symptoms are really bad, you can have several of these pathways involved simultaneously. Knowing what activates inflammation and how it works can help you overcome and prevent it from happening in the first place. That's why it's really important to be at least aware of some of the key types of inflammation. Now recall what I said in my other video that most inflammation starts in your gut. Now, you shouldn't be surprised by this considering around 70 to 80 percent of your immune system is contained in your gut. So when you have an inflammatory disease such as lupus, you need to take a look at what's going on with diet and digestion. Frequently, inflammation starts in the intestines, so to heal inflammation, you also need to heal the gut. So before we discuss the three types of inflammation, if you are serious about healing the gut to improve lupus and achieve results fast, check out a free training that I put together where I walk you through the specific strategies that have helped my clients achieve success within six weeks. You can access it at the link down below and I know it'll help you very much. The link takes you to a page where you can enter in your email to receive a free training on how to reverse lupus. Everything you need to know is in there, including free guide with specific dietary recommendations and tons of helpful case studies of people just like you who reverse their conditions for good and are now healthy. The cases are valuable because you'll see how real people deal with inflammation and how they were able to improve their condition just by making a few small changes. The training comes with a complete actionable game plan for how you can do this yourself at home. So just enter in your email at the top of the page and get started. Now let's talk about the three types of inflammation. I recorded this video earlier and it discusses how the immune system is activated in three ways. The histamine pathway is probably one of the most important ones to know. Here's an example of one of my patients who had high amounts of eosinophils due to candida overgrowth in his gut. His histamine levels were so high that all he had to do was gently stroke his skin and in 30 seconds it would turn bright beet red. This is called dermatographia and it's actually a form of hives. Unfortunately, many people have this type of histamine reaction always and have no clue. I just want to correct one misconception. Most people think that if they have allergies that it's coming from something in the environment like grass or hay or flowers or dust or mold. While this is partially true, it's important to know that most of the histamine in the human body is actually produced in the gut by intestinal bacteria that convert histidine into histamine. Histidine is an amino acid found in certain types of protein. It gets converted into histamine which triggers allergic reactions in the body. So it's important to limit both histidine containing foods and histamine stimulating foods. They include things like shellfish, peanuts, and pineapples. But the biggest stimulator is actually simple carbohydrates like sugars, breads, crackers, chips, juices, pasta, candies, and certain types of fruit. 
It turns out all of these sugary foods feed bad bacteria and stimulate overgrowth of candida, which is a type of yeast and fungus. This bad bacteria and candida produce super high amounts of histamine in the bloodstream, which leads to things like allergies, tiredness, indigestion, rashes, hives, body aches, and runny nose. So how do we use this knowledge to our advantage? Well, one simple answer is A, eat fewer starchy foods. B, eat more green leafy vegetables and high fibrous foods. C, improve your intestinal flora with regular bowel movements two to four times a day. Probiotics also two to four times a day and phytonutrients. D, stay away from foods that are high in histidine, which is a precursor molecule to histamine. Now would be a good time to point out that most people think that you need to take an antibiotic or an antifungal to clear intestinal bacteria overgrowth in candida. The reality is all you really need to do is have two to four bowel movements a day so that you get rid of the, the unwanted bugs in your GI system. Then you can repopulate the system two to four times a day with probiotics. You do this and antibiotics and antifungals are rarely needed. Also, if you happen to take an antibiotic or antifungal, just remember that it only works for the first few days. Then the GI tract gets repopulated with bacteria and candida, especially if the diet is bad. To summarize the histidine pathway, there are histidine amino acids in the diet that get converted into histamine when we eat certain foods that cause overgrowth of bacteria and candida in the system. This histamine that's released into the bloodstream produces allergies, sinus drainage, sore throat, itchy, scaly, dry skin, asthma, shortness of breath, pain, and fatigue. Okay, we'll be moving on now. Here is the arachidonic acid pathway. All animal cells have a membrane wall that contains fats and cholesterol, which convert into arachidonic acid and cytokines in our bodies and generate inflammation. Do all animal-derived products contain arachidonic acid? No, just meat and fat-containing dairy products. Remember, the arachidonic acid doesn't come from the protein component, it comes from the fat and the cholesterol in the cell wall. So for example, egg whites are pure protein, so they don't contain arachidonic acid. Marine and bovine collagen also do not contain arachidonic acid. Fat-free yogurt and bone broth are other examples. But something like red meat has a lot of fat and cholesterol in it. So arachidonic acid production is especially bad. But unfortunately, even white meat, poultry, and fish contain substantial amounts because they contain lipid cholesterol. For this reason, limiting meat and dairy intake improves inflammation. Now I want to talk about the salt pathway. So here's the thing, everyone knows that when they eat large amounts of salt, they feel very bloated and inflamed the next day. It's especially bad if you have an inflammatory disease because the salt also increases the amount of pain in the body. This is no accident. Table salt, sodium chloride, activates a special type of white blood cell called Th17. These immune cells activate a pathway called SGK1, which results in autoimmune disease and inflammation. That's why if you have any type of immune or inflammatory or digestive problem, it's important to avoid salt altogether. Now, also remember that salt is contained in lots of foods that we don't even think about. Most packaged foods, desserts, baked goods, sauces have large amounts of sodium. Also, I found this really surprising. Chicken has a lot of sodium because they actually inject it inside the meat. Sometimes the saline weight is up to 30% of the actual meat. So pay attention, you could be inadvertently making your situation worse by eating something that you don't even think has any salt in it, but it does. If you're wondering what a good limit is, historically many people have said 2 grams, which is 2,000 milligrams. But I think even this is too high. I think you're better off under a gram, or even 0.5 grams or 500 milligrams, which is half a gram. And the reason I say this is that the body has ways of extracting salt from the normal food that we eat. Keep in mind, until a couple hundred years ago when salt was discovered as a way of preserving meat and the salt trade became a thing, humans never added salt to anything that they ate. It also turns out that many of the inflammatory and immune diseases 
were also more common in countries and places where they consumed large amounts of salt. TNF-alpha and IL-6. In my opinion, it's one of the most important. Whenever there's a trigger for inflammation in the body, the body has a choice to either deal with it appropriately or in a dysfunctional way. If the immune system decides it wants to react in an unhelpful way, then the body will produce inflammation that will attack its own tissue. IL-6 and TNF-alpha are cell signaling molecules you can measure in the blood that predict whether the body will have a dysfunctional response versus a healthy response. In fact, these cytokines are involved in a large number of chronic diseases. One of the most potent activators of IL-6 and TNF-alpha is fat in the diet, specifically animal fat, especially in red meat, but also meats in general. Butter, dairy, and cheese is problematic. The folks that have the lowest IL-6 and TNF-alpha levels follow a phytonutrient diet, which have lots of healthy vegetables and healthy fats like olive oil. Other things that work are intermittent fasting, Here's another interesting study which shows that even if you don't eat perfectly, increasing the amount of phytonutrients, and specifically polyphenols in the diet, will downregulate IL-6 production from food in the intestines. Which means, even if you eat pepperoni pizza, if you drink some phytonutrient tea afterwards, for example, it blunts the effects of the fat, sort of like a rescue mechanism. Also, I'm going to give you another pearl of knowledge here. One of the simplest things you can do to drive these levels down are to take a vitamin D supplement. Turns out, if you're low on vitamin D, the IL-6 and TNF-alpha levels shoot way up. That's one of the theories on why equatorial countries such as Africa, where they get enough vitamin D from the sunlight, have better immune responses to illness. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. Now, I wanna know what types of inflammation do you experience and what have you tried that works? Leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. Also, if you like this video, help support my channel and share this with your fellow loved ones. And be sure to subscribe for more useful tips. You can also follow me on social, at DossaryMD. As always, this is Dr. Chanu Dossary with the MindGut Immunity Clinic, and I'll see you next time.